The Trudeau government's support of peaceful protests in Hong Kong has sparked a stern response from the Chinese embassy in Ottawa. In a statement on its website, here's what the embassy says. Canada should, quote, immediately stop meddling in Hong Kong affairs and China's internal affairs. It adds this. Under the current situation, the Canadian side should be cautious on its words and deeds regarding the Hong Kong-related issue. Hmm. The response follows a joint statement by Canada's Foreign Minister Christian Freeland and the EU on Saturday. It condemned the violence between police and demonstrators, but it didn't specifically blame either side. This is an interesting topic. And for more on China's response to Canada, our chase team has reached this man, Colin Robertson. He's in our nation's capital. He's a former Canadian diplomat, served in Hong Kong. He's also the vice president of the Canadian Global Affairs Institute. So, Colin, as you look at the back and forth, what do you make of Beijing's warning? Well, it's predictable and it's consistent with how they behaved in the past. They regard any, as they term it, foreign interference in the, the larger affairs of Hong Kong and that would, uh, or China, and that would also include Tibet, as beyond the bounds. And so they're, they're pressing back, uh, as, as they have in the past. And I think it was very much, as you said, in response to the statement made by Christa Freeland and the high representative from the European Union, uh, that basically called for restraint on the part of the Chinese. When does it stop being just finger-wagging? On the part of China? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, when China decides to take uh, further action against us, as you know, they've embargoed our canola and they've taken yes. action against beef and pork and they've got a couple of Canadian sausage. It would not surprise me if in the coming days, if especially something happens at the G7, or I think the G7 leaders do have to speak out on Hong Kong. And my suggestion is they appoint an eminent persons group to, to monitor the international covenants that China agreed to and that Canada is in a sense a party too, that I would not surprise me then that China takes some further action against Hong Kong, against some kind of food, for example, our seafood as an example. Would it be fair to say that uh, the G7 leaders, we can consider them champions of liberty and democracy? How, how strong, how much, what will be the guts of these champions? Will they have the guts? That's what I'm asking. Well, you know, that's the question. Uh, the, when the G7 was set up, I mean, these are the great democracies. And liberty and uh, democratic uh, uh, advancement of democracy was, was part of their raison d'etre when they were set up in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And they have more or less adhered to this. And they were party to the negotiations around Hong. Of course, the lead in that was the United Kingdom because it was a British colony. Right. So uh, they are going to come up with what, do you think, when they meet? Uh, and the world will be watching because it will be a, a statement that we'll all have to wear. Yeah, my, 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 my gut sense is that we're probably not going to see a lot. That my sense is that we were working behind the scenes, uh, Krista Freeland with her counterparts, and what was noticeable about the statement made on, on, uh, on Saturday by her and the European Union is the United States was not present. And for this to have real effect, the United States has to be there. And I suspect she spoke to Pompeo and the White House said, no, we're staying out of this because we've got bigger fish to fry in the bigger uh, U.S.-China trade dispute that's going on. So for it to have effect, it will have to have all. And it, the, the British foreign minister didn't come in, although you could argue that because they're still part of the union, they're still included. But the Brits have also been somewhat circumspect. And we'll have to see where Boris Johnson goes on this one. Do you think there will be flack for countries that do take to the sidelines on this, that don't come with their guts? Uh, domestically, yes, from their human rights lobbies and from concerned citizens. But I, I think uh, the business community will largely be happy to, to try and play this down because of the, the deep relationships many of them have with China. This has always been a part of the, the challenge is how do you balance the economic relationship we have with China with the requirement uh, that democracies see for greater political rights. We're basically dealing with two, with an open system, which is what we live in, and a closed system, which mm -hmm. is what China is practicing. And the closed system would also extend to Hong Kong. But Hong Kong, by international covenant, is meant to be different. There's a certain degree of openness that was guaranteed by the Chinese for 50 years to 2049. Canada has the biggest interest in Hong Kong because we've got the largest expatriate population. After Tiananmen Square, the most people who left Hong Kong came to Canada. 
We have 300,000 Canadians there. As a matter of fact, uh, you know what I spoke At with, least, I think. Yeah, I spoke with a Canadian who was there uh, with his family and considering, you know, his family, his mom and dad are here in Canada. He's got his own family there in Hong Kong, wife, kids, et cetera. Wondering, you know, should I leave because things are, are getting a little bit tense there and perhaps I'm, that's an understatement uh, to the nth degree. Do you think Canada will be a leader at the G7 when it comes to protecting liberty, democracy, and speaking up? Yes, I do, because I think the, the statement on Saturday, Krista Freeland, I think, working with her partner, uh, the European Union foreign minister, I think they cobbled this together, and, I, and I'm sure that Trudeau will, uh, Justin Trudeau will take this, too, because I think this is something that he has said from the outset, as have previous governments. You know, there's, we won't distinguish between conservative or liberal here. They... They have always said that democracy and Hong Kong, we have a special interest in. We've got ties that go back a century and a half. There were Canadians who died in the defense of Hong Kong. You know, they, they, as I say, the, the diaspora of Hong Kongers is probably largest in Canada, as you to, just described from talking with the person who lives in Hong Kong, but his parents are here. So I think we will probably take this forward uh, at the G7 around the table. But where it goes from there, that will be the question. One final question for you, Colin. We are in an election year. Uh, we're waiting for, uh, you know, the actual writ to be dropped, which will be very soon. Do you think this will be on the priority list for the parties, or is it not even, not even there? I think because there is a significant Hong Kong Chinese population in Canada who are active politically and give me money, yes, I think it will be an issue. And I don't think there'll be any difference in the parties, whether it's Green, NDP, Liberal or Conservative. I think they'll all come out that we should be doing more to support democracy in Hong Kong. I want to thank you for your time, Colin. Great to have you on the program. You take care. Thanks, Suhanna. Colin Robertson is a former Canadian diplomat who served in Hong Kong.